Hello and welcome to Short Tales, a series of short stories and reviews written and read by me, Damien Robb. I have found that there is an activity that can have differing responses from those doing it. For some, it can be a zen and calming experience, methodical and straightforward, whereas for others, it is a rage-inducing, frustration-laden event that leaves them the same colour as the purpose of the activity. This review is on painting a big red door. In another life, I was a painter. The life in question was this one just 15 years ago. But as our cells are constantly dying and regenerating, excepting our neurons, as I learned when fact-checking this detail, let's call it another life, as that person was mostly, physically, another me. This painter's life began after I'd finished high school, and as I really had no idea what to do next, had decided to take a gap year. I still wouldn't know after that year, but we can review the difficulty of choosing a life path at the ignorant age of 18 another time. I chose to get a job and save some money, failing to realise how difficult this endeavour would turn out to be, living as I did in a country town with limited job opportunities available for people with zero life skill and or working experience. My resume was basically just my name and phone number. Luckily, a family friend by the name of Angelo, think an Italian Michael Scott with a Mario moustache, knew I was looking for work and had decided to take me on. I say decided because that's how it felt, like he had made the decision and so I was now his apprentice whether I wanted to be or not. He was aggressive in his kindness, and I'm glad he was. Angelo worked as a handyman with two other people under him, one a carpenter, the other a plumber, but due to the handyman aspect of the work, both of them completed a variety of tasks. As a lot of the work he picked up usually entailed painting at some stage in the process, that was the skill Angelo decided to train me in. It also just happened to be the skill that fit my personality perfectly. Painting is not for everybody. I've had different people tell me they loathe it for a number of reasons. Some have said it takes too long, others that it's boring or too messy, and one person even told me the smell of paint makes them nauseous. I love it. Painting requires patience and time. It demands a focus and a concentration of attention to ensure that the coloured liquid you're pushing around only goes where you want it to go, and not where gravity would prefer to take it. Because of this focus, I find it meditative. Often when I paint, it's just me and it's quiet or I have some music softly playing and I have one job to do, one thing to focus all my attention on, which is to slowly and carefully move the brush or roller around the room until the whole thing is coated with a fresh start. At the end of it, I get the very visual satisfaction of a job completed, the clear mind of a focused worker and the warm and worn muscles that come with physical work. Fast forward more than a few years and I am no longer a painter. I miss it, but also have other things in my life now, such as writing and a wife, just for starters. However, every once in a while, someone I know needs some painting done, at which point I often raise an eager hand. Enter the big red door, or rather the big grey door that would become red in the not-so-distant future. I was working casually at a writing studio run by a friend of mine, and he had put out a call for volunteers for a working bee for the studio. I replied that I would dust off my painting gear and bring it along. The studio existed in an old heritage building in the heart of Fitzroy. It has since moved, but we'll get to that, and stood tall with thick wooden doors years old. The doors were the only part of the studio that required a fresh coat. The coat in question would be a warm red one, as the studio had recently rebranded and this particular shade of red was their primary colour. The rest of the building was a mix of grey and white, and so I knew the red would look outstanding with them as a backdrop. First, though, was the question of prep work. Like any job well done, painting requires a healthy amount of prep work before the fun part, i.e. the painting, can begin. Cracks need to be filled, imperfections sanded away, and flaking paint removed. These doors had a lot of flaking paint. The previous owners of the building had given it a facelift before passing it along, including a fresh coat of white on the insides of the doors. They'd also, unfortunately, used an acrylic paint over the top of an enamel one, hence all the flaking. Acrylic doesn't stick well to enamel, and so using just a fingernail and very little pressure, I was able to strip a line of the white from its underlying base. That's not meant to happen, and so it would all need to go. I got to work with a scraper and sander, and soon sheets, chips, and chalky dust flakes of dry white paint were raining down upon me. 
I want to say it was like snow, but in reality, it was like a big cloud of dandruff drifting down from the head of some dry scalped giant. So not overly pleasant. It takes a while to remove a whole coat of paint from a surface, especially one that has panels and trowels like these doors did. But eventually I got the majority of it off, cleaned up as much of it as I could, the wind keen to make the job as hard as possible, and then finally, I was ready to begin. As always, the process forced a focus that stilled my mind and narrowed my world down to a brush, a bucket, and the surface I was painting. The first coat is always a little patchy, especially with such a rich colour like the red coating the underlying lighter grey, but it didn't take long before you could see the new door emerging from the old. Passers-by eyed the doors, often offering positive opinions about it, my favourite of which was when one man described them as inspirational. I liked that. I liked that a solo act of improvement could have further reaching influence, that when we do something positive, its effect could ripple outwards, causing change and motivations we might never know about. While it might be fairly strange that a man would describe a set of doors as inspirational, it was a description I could get behind. The second coat went on, and with it, the new door presented itself in all its glory, a small point of bright colour in a street full of concrete greys and bitumen blacks. The idea that these big, now red doors could be inspirational stuck in my mind, and so when a week later I was leading a writing night at the very same studio, I decided to use those doors as the inspiration for a small writing challenge. I asked the writers to write a quick piece that featured the doors in any way they liked. The results were excellent and varied. One was haunting and dark, another used the doors to lead us into the realms of fantasy, another still placed them in a nearby suburb in a story that felt rich and real, another story made us laugh out loud, the protagonist being the doors themselves, and another rhymed with silly fun. Five new stories, out in the world, off to create ripples of their own, all of them now existing due to the painting of a big red door. That door, unfortunately, has since lost its redness. The business moved from Fitzroy to Carlton last September, and an architecture firm moved in. The red was not on brand for them, and so away it went, hidden beneath a couple of new coats of paint. But it still exists, lying just below the surface. I hope it gets scratched one day, causing the red to come through. I hope if it does, it causes questions and curiosity, and dare I say it, inspiration. As for the new studio, I ended up painting that as well. Not the door and not red, but white walls to make a literal blank canvas. They've now been partially covered with art and bookshelves and sign writing, and I now work there part-time running the adult programs, which means I look at those walls at least twice a week. I work and run workshops, talk to colleagues and write, all within those walls, surrounded by the paint I put there. The past Damien and the present Damien sitting together. My cells may be different, and I may have changed but I'll always be happy to both paint and write about a big red door. I hope you enjoyed this month's review. And if you write your own review, send it my way. I'd love to read it. And while you're at it, if you just want to say hi, you can do that too. You can email me at shorttales.podcast at gmail.com or find me on Twitter at Midday Pajamas. Until next time, this has been Short Tales and I've been Damien Robb.